What's up beautiful people? Thank you so much for clicking on today's video. But just before you go, there is a couple of things I really do need to mention. It's going to be only ever so slightly long winded, but that's purely because of all the new subscribers and all the new viewers clicking on today's video and from the multi-species ecosystem. I just want to tell you all that I had no idea that this channel would actually even do this well. All of my footage and all of my editing I physically do on my phone while I'm working a full-time job. And also having a family, expanding a family, I literally I get married next week. I'm on my stag do in two days time, um, you know, so I can't thank you all enough. My life has been hectic and crazy. And the people who clicked on that multi-species ecosystem, thank you so much. Honestly, I've never had even that close to that many views on a video. Just so you all know as well, there's always been massive plans for this channel. I've always wanted to expand, but regardless of the channel, that was always going to be my hobby and always something that I would be doing anyway. The expansion means I get twice the amount of space, close to three times the amount of space, meaning that I can get even bigger tanks and even bigger multi-species ecosystems. So I honestly can't wait for all of this to come to fruition. And, um, you know, maybe it's this time next year, I'll be in that new room with all my new tanks and hopefully saving up for each project as I go. And, you know, you'll all be there and part of that journey, which you all already have been. So thank you all much for clicking on today's video. But as always from me, peace and love. I'm out. I got these ladies coming up 11 months ago. They are such an awesome species and they've grown quite fast. They've now packed out this outworld and an even larger high tech ants nest. Hence the reason I decided to build this brand new scape for them. The first thing here is I'm putting in a mat. Essentially this mat is the same one I use for all of my other builds. I wrap it in membrane and this keeps the soil out of that water level. I then start attaching some bogwood, different things to the back plant pots for some plants and also that foam just to solidify everything in there. Once I've done that, again, I'm going to skip through this as quick as I can just because I've shown this so many times. I silicon seal all of that foam once I've cut it all down. I then stick all of the cocoa fibre to the back of that silicon seal which is on the foam and let it dry or cure over the next 24 hours. I found that it does work best if you just do this in stages. If you do miss any parts the following morning, and normally there's only ever a couple of patches missed, you can use hot glue or cyacrylite and attach some substrate that way, and essentially that'll cover any hardship or any uh, bad visible spots. All I'm doing here is I'm building it up around the detail, the spider wood, the finer details of the tank. And you can see here, that's where your mesh membrane is. The water level will only ever be at that layer. The drainage layer already acts as, well, a drainage layer because the water's lower than that level. The drainage is more of a precautionary action in case the water somehow um, gets higher or if I overwater, anything like that. This is kind of my insurance to say that the drainage layer will also hold another two inches or an inch of water before it physically runs straight into the soil. Once I'd done that, I then decide to make it more arid. The first initial scape I wasn't happy with, the bromeliad again wasn't happy with. This was the final scape though, just before I decided to take this to Antcon. If you didn't know what Antcon is, it's actually the largest ant meetup within the whole of Europe, but that's not the best part. Everybody is family everybody just gets on so well and that's not just for that day it's a whole weekend thing where everyone gets to meet up have some beers together sit in weather spoons and have a laugh and then enjoy this full day event you then have schedules throughout the day you get put into different groups and what happens is that way you get to see every single part of the event the likes of actually meeting with ant holofer aesthetic ants as well the event has a lot of guest speakers as well Touching on subjects like we should basically work more with nature. At the same time, the developers of the Empires of the Undergrowth, which is super, super cool. You also got like a VR experience in there. People brought their own tanks. You then had the launch of the new Gen Wakushi nests, which is Gen 4, which are really, really cool to see those in development. I brought all of the materials for people to build their own terrariums with the plants, the moss, you know, the, the botanicals, the hardscape, every single element you could think of. I brought it just so people could make them themselves. And then the crowd actually voted for the best ones. People then got to keep them and the others got auctioned off and the proceeds went to charity at the end. While you're also doing this whole day event, there's so many tanks around the whole of the venue, which is super, super cool. Things like the leaf cutters, these massive Carabera diversity colonies, and also awesome multi-species tanks throughout the whole setup. 
There's also a relax room where basically you can go and chill there if you've come with the kids and you need to do some work or even if you've brought some camera gear or equipment and you need to charge it as well, you can go in there for half an hour and chill, relax, get some headspace and charge your devices then go back out and start filming some more things or most of the part becoming part of the family and just having a good laugh. And yes, while you're there, you can buy Queen Ants and they are the best and healthiest ants you could physically buy in the whole of Europe. There's so much here that I haven't shown, but it's purely because there's too much going on. You're enjoying yourself too much. And that's basically the principle of Ancon. The first things we're going to be adding to this tank here are these Armadillidium Vulgare Multicolors. I then decide to add in some Bumblebee Millipedes. I think these will be a great addition to the setup because they will burrow and they will just churn that soil over. I added six in total, ranging from adults to juvenile, but hopefully for now, they just burrow away and constantly eat all of that waste. I also added in some Springtails that you can see, Armadillidae Maculata Zebras, and at the same time, I also added in some Tiger Worms. The cleanup crew is essential. I need to make sure that they break down any uneaten food and any waste that's within the setup. And you can see that isopod there was just going to town straight away. The waterfall feature is working very well. I finally was able to add the floating plants that I wanted to add originally, but it was all condensed up at Ancon because I actually forgot to bring the proper lid for it. But the lid now fits perfectly either way. Now that I've brought it home and sorted it out properly. And other than that, I just put an even bigger heat mat underneath to keep the temperatures constantly high, just to make sure these have the best heat available and also the best arid conditions slightly below the soil. Once I got home and everything was sorted, I decided to actually water everything down, let everything set in a little bit more, and at the same time, I did loads of different types of feeders. The reason I did this, I just wanted to give them a big tree after the long journey home and the long journey there. The ants themselves though did dig this up and made it look nothing like it's supposed to. I did then add some floating plants as well, because, well, if the ants fall in, at least they can get out. This way it does prevent many deaths, but even so, some will drown. That actually keeps the numbers in check only ever so slightly. The male elates were all over this tank, not from this actual colony. That species, however, does look a lot more intimidating than this species. And unfortunately in the ant world, the male ants are literally just walking sperm banks. The females, however, have these super awesome, fast, powerful, intimidating looking jaws that close at 145 miles per hour. It was really good to see the Campanotus feasting though. But these mages do have really, really cool colorations and different colors compared to the standard workers. The mages that actually decide to come out and feast aren't actually the largest of the mages you can get. At this point, I'd say they're probably halfway there, but the, you know, the really big super mages that do grow, believe me, they are awesome they literally match up to the size of the queen. I fed them a piece of steak and you can see this workers just go into town on it. At this point you can see there's two majors out feasting so it's a really good sign that they've got a healthy colony going there. I then decided to put even more plants in the setup. I felt like it was missing quite a lot of that dense bush towards the back near that waterfall. It'll also grow really, really well there because the roots will be constantly submerged and that way it can develop some really strong roots and take any harmful things out of that water section because I am thinking of keeping some shrimp in there. But I need your help again. Let me know in the comments what I should keep there. I was thinking time micro crabs or something like that. But this is the setup. I hope you do like it and I will be updating this setup in a little bit of time. But if you did like the video, please don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe if you want to see some more content. And at the same time, I hope you all have a lovely day. But as always from me, peace and love, I'm out.